So let me introduce Alexander, who will talk about data classes in Python 3.6. And uh, enjoy. If you have any questions, write them down so you don't forget them. Great. Applaud to Alexander. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, my name is Alexander Holtner. And I'm going to talk about the uh, data classes in uh, Python 3.6 and in uh, 3.7. Uh, I'm just going to snap a quick photo about, uh, of you because it's awesome to see all you guys here. Uh, so I have something to show the people at the office later. Uh, so about the office, I work uh, at a company called Cetras. Uh, we do uh, software for some large uh, international brands like Lamborghini and Porsche and Volkswagen. And we work in a castle, which is quite cool. We have actually hosted a, a Gothenburg Python meetup there, and we will do more times. We also had, have hosted some hackathons. So, uh, so that's nice. And we describe uh, ourselves as a hybrid company between tech and business development, which says pretty much nothing for most people. But we love Python, and we big build uh, business software, a lot of software used behind the scenes at large companies, uh, which, is, which is fun and exciting. And uh, we get to tackle a lot of different kind of problems. So on to the actual uh, talk. So a short outline. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, why we have data classes and why we should use them. I'm going to have a sheet sheet with uh, the two-minute uh, summary about data classes. So if you're just going to listen for one part, do that one part and uh, remember that, and then you can find out the rest on your own. And I'm going to talk uh, a short bit about the history, uh, about using data classes, some examples, some of the utility uh, functions and class uh, properties of data classes. Uh, working with them in JSON. I'm going to have a bit in Jupyter where I'm going to show you how you can use them and some neat tricks. Uh, going to have some conclusion and then some questions. And all the links and everything uh, is going to be on the last slide. You saw some links here as well, but uh, I have them uh, on the last slide as well. So, uh, so you have a chance to get them there and you can either go to my GitHub or to the slide or wherever, and you can find everything else via the other. So if you remember one link, that will be enough. And I will tweet out the links later as well. Uh, OK, so onward. Uh, so why do, oh, I, sorry, <laughs> I dropped this one. Uh, so why do we have data classes? Uh, they simplify the use of uh, classes in Python, uh, removes uh, much of the boilerplate, and with less boilerplate, we will have less bugs. Uh, it's built on top of previous experience and uh, what we have learned from both third-party libraries, but uh, as well uh, named tuples and things in the actual uh, Python standard library. And it's in, in the standard library, which is a big thing because and there will likely grow a lot of libraries around data classes, and the e ecosystem will grow. And there's been talk about adding more functionality to it when it grows, uh, some more validators. And it's quite easily extendable and customizable. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a very nice thing about data classes. So the quick cheat sheet. Uh, so it's, oh. I forgot, it's in Python 3.7. Uh, I actually had this similar talk before Python 3.7 was released, so that's uh, <laughs> why I accidentally wrote coming here. Uh, anyway, but it's usable already in 3.6, uh, and since a lot of people are on 3.6, uh, that's nice to know, but you have to install it. So you can do a pip install data classes, and it basically requires type annotations and that the standard dict implementation is sorted, 
which isn't standardized until 3.7, but in the 3.6 uh, implementation, it works like that, so it's fine. Uh, and there is only the CPython implementation of 3.6 at the moment, so it works in all known implementations of Python 3.6. Uh, and it's a native alternative to adders. Some of you might have uh, known about that or um, about named tuples, which is uh, another similar system uh, which they took inspiration from and remade uh, some of the mistakes and made it better. But uh, there are uh, some other libraries as well that handles uh, similar things. I also added some links here to the GitHub uh, pep and draft and the backport uh, to the actual pep. Uh, some uh, some guides about data classes. Another talk at PyCon by Ryman Hettinger, uh, which is a very good one, a little bit longer. So if you want to know more details, you can take a look at that one. Uh, yeah. So uh, the history about uh, data classes. It started. Uh, with uh, some other libraries, such as named tuple, which is in the standard library. They actually changed up uh, named tuple uh, in, I think it was 3.6, to uh, allow a syntax similar to the one of uh, data classes, but it doesn't have quite all the bells and whistles and improvements of data classes. Uh, adders is probably the most, uh, most prominent example. Uh, it's very similar. I've seen uh, some uh, some work on compatibility between adders and data classes. I've seen for Marshmallow as well. Uh, I'm not sure about the status right now. I haven't followed it in detail, but I think there at least is work ongoing to make them very smooth to transition between. Uh, there are ORM libraries, which is a similar concept, such as SQL Alchemy, there is PV, there is the Django or um, yeah, several different ones. And it's the PEP557 uh, backport that you will be using in the in the 3.6 instances when you want that. Uh, and so on to it. And here's a minimal example of a data class. So you can see you you import it from the standard library. And basically, this is it. So uh, it's very simple. You add a data class uh, decorator, and you create your class. And then through the properties and the type annotations, it will uh, it will automatically generate the init, the wrapper, the equals for you, free out of the box. And uh, it can also generate a lot of more functions. But uh, then you have to add some custom attributes to the data class decorator. I will show you some more examples later. And of course, always check out the documentations for all the details. But basically, th this is the way to create a data class. And as you see, it's much smoother than creating your large init function and uh, setting the self dot properties on everything and all those things. Uh, so. This makes it very easy, very simple to make a, a new class in Python and very ad hoc. Uh, and here is a little bit more extended example. So as you can see here, I added a, a field. Uh, so the field is a function from the data class uh, module. And it allows you to customize the properties of the field with some different uh, params, and one of them is the default factory. So in this case, we want to set the year to the current year when you create an instance of the class. Now, I could set this directly as the default value, but then it would be the year when the code started, which might be the same year, or around New Year, it might not. So uh, this is an important difference. Uh, and commonly a uh, problem as well with uh, default arguments uh, where you sometimes uh, want uh, a, a function to be uh, called to create a new instance instead of having a shared reference with lists, for instance. That's commonly a problem. And uh, here I also do some 
post init. So that's a special function in data classes, which allows you to do some post processing or validation or whatever you want after the uh, real init has run. So in this case, I check if the date was set as a string. And if it is, I will format it as a date time. Uh, and the date time library, library actually uh, added a from ISO format function in 3.7, which is a nice added feature, which I've been uh, wanting for a long time, so that's nice. Uh, and there are a lot of utility functions in the data class modules. Here's some of them. Uh, as dict is probably one you will use a lot to just uh, translate it to a dict. There is an as tuple as well, which is useful if you want to unpack the, the params and if you want to use it in a similar way as name tuples. Then there is a make uh, data class uh, utility function, basically to be able to create new data classes in uh, runtime. There is an is data class, which is a simple helper just to check if something actually is a data class. There is a replace function where you can create a new instance of a data class, but just uh, replace a single property or a keyword. So it will create a duplicate and change that param. You have some handy attributes uh, in the class, such as annotations, where you can get all the type annotations. I actually created a small uh, type uh, validator from this for simple types, which just goes through the annotations uh, in the post in it and uh, actually checks if the actual assigned properties uh, are of the correct type. So. That way you can automate a lot of that work as well. And of course, all the params and field params you use to create your data class is also available. So that's very handy because you can actually always see how the data class was created. Uh, and there is uh, simple ways to convert uh, between JSON and uh, data classes. Uh, you can cast it to a dict with the as dict function from the data classes module. And for that, you can use JSON dumpus as normal and or any other JSON tool to serialize it to JSON. And you can expand the uh, keyword arguments if you create a dict from the JSON and in instantiate uh, the data class from that. You can also create a custom JSON encoder. I will show you an example later. Uh, with that, and I will show some more examples about this as well in Jupyter, uh, which I have prepared some different examples for you. Uh, yeah, so that's very smooth to use, and uh, I've actually used it uh, extensively for the past year in a project I'm working on right now with my team, and we have used data classes for all the validation uh, and uh, deserialization and serialization between JSON and the database in our APIs, and it has worked very good for us. So that's very nice, and uh, I would very much like to see this ecosystem to keep growing. Uh, so, uh, as I told you, uh, I have prepared an example in Jupyter Lab and the whole notebook with all the code and all the links and Everything is uh, available on my GitHub. My username there is Haltner. You can just browse to Python data classes. The link will be in the slides as well. Uh, and um, yeah, so the full notebook and everything will be available there. I, I learned the hard way that doing the, the interactive part in the REPL is kind of bad if you accidentally turn off your terminal and want to actually <laughs> post the history later for uh, uh, for inspection. So, on to the Jupyter part of the presentation. So, here you can see I start with some basic imports. Uh, can, can you actually see the text or is it too small? Yeah, I'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, is this good? Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, as you see, I, uh, I import the data classes and date time because I'm going to use a date. So I start with creating a very simple data class. Uh, I have a location, which is a string. I have a date, which is a date time. I have a year, which is the int. 
and I hard code it to 2018 because I'm pragmatic and I just want to get this out right now. Uh, and I just try to instantiate it without any params just to see what happens. And maybe I will get a type error, which I will, and it will tell me that location and date is missing, but as you see, uh, the year is actually not missing, so the default uh, argument is seem, seems to work as uh, expected. So, as you can see, the init was uh, generated for us, and it also does some validation and handles stuff for us. So, uh, let's see if we can actually instantiate it. So, here I created for this uh, event the PyCon uh, instance of Stockholm, and it's today. 2018, 12, 12, 12, or <laughs> 18, 12, 12. Uh, and we can see that we get the location, we get the date time year, uh, or date time date, and we get the year. Uh, and you can see I used the for from ISO format function. This is only available in Python 3.7, but anyone who has done date time conversion in Python know there are pl plenty of libraries to do it in older versions, but it's actually a very nice added feature. I've used it a little bit on some smaller projects. Uh, so see if we can improve on it a little bit. Maybe we can do this automatically in the class and uh, just pass it as a string. So let's create a, yeah, and let's create a factory for the year so we don't ha hard code it to the current year. So we have the, factory, which creates uh, the current year int, and uh, in the post in it, I will check if date is a string. If it, uh, if it is, it will format the date time to, to actually a date time object, and if it's invalid, it will raise a value error. So that should be fine. Let's try it out with the string directly, and as you can see, we get a proper date time. So that's much smoother. No, uh, no need to actually call the date time conversion every time you instantiate it this way. So let's go over to part two where we use this class we have created a little bit. Um, so let's start with the as tuple function. Um, so it's a function in the data classes module. This is a distinction from name tuples. You have used the name tuples before. Know that in name tuples you have something like this where you do point underscore as tuple or as stict. Uh, but uh, so this is slightly less uh, discoverable in my opinion at least. But it's uh, it's still very accessible and you can check out the data classes module in the Python docs to see all the functions available. So here we can see it formatted our or our uh, object as a tuple, and it's very useful, for instance, when unpacking. So here I have unpacked the city and year to create this string where I pronounce in what year and city the PyCon will be in Sweden. Uh, and yeah, I'm using F strings here, which is a feature of Python 3.6, if any one of you haven't seen it yet. Uh, and in my opinion, this is useful, but what I will use even more is the asstict function. So by doing this simple thing, I get something that looks like this. So now I have something that's very dynamic and I can easily serialize and use with other formats. And when talking about serialization, JSON often comes up because it's the standard communication protocol between languages and the stacks today. So uh, so let's try to create a very simple JSON encoder class just to try out encoding um, the data classes. And I, I will do this generically, so it will work for all data classes. As long as all the properties are JSON serializable, this will work. Uh, of course, uh, if you have properties which aren't JSON serializable, you will have to have some uh, handling of those. Uh, you maybe already have in your is an encoder, so I create this custom encoder class, and if it is a data class, using the isDataClass function from the from the data class module, 
And if it is, I use the as dict and return it. And when it's a dict, the JSON encoder can e easily encode it, so it's no problem anymore. And I also added a small datetime handler because they aren't serializable from the get-go. So this is roughly 10 rows of code, and I handle both data classes and date times. So it's very simple. And uh, since it's not specific for the PyCon uh, class, I can use it with any data, data class. But let's try it out with the object we already have. So let's try it with JSON Dumpus with our object and our custom encoder. And as you can see, I get a nice JSON string with the ISO format the uh, date string and the other properties of the data class. And of course, you probably want to decode it back into a PyCon object. Maybe you get input from, a, from an external client or something which are sending you this data. So let's just uh, create a JSON payload by serializing it. And let's just try to, to load that uh, as a dict and then expand the dict into the data class instance. And it works out of the box. Uh, so this is very nice for two-way conversion. We already have a class which we can easily uh, serialize to JSON and we can also turn it back into a new instance of the object as well. So in this way, we, we can very easily create some API models without having extended schemas and validators. Uh, I have seen some work on, uh, on uh, libraries uh, creating uh, JSON schemas, generating them from data classes, also being able to add uh, Marshmallow validators and make it uh, usable with Marshmallow type of stuff. Uh, so, so that's very nice if you want to take it to the next step. Maybe you want to formalize it a little bit more. And I expect this ecosystem to grow even more now when it's official and it's starting to, to catch on. Uh, and it's very likely that Python standard library will keep on working on the data classes construct as well. So uh, maybe you want immutable objects. Uh, so I was thinking we could try to make our PyCon class immutable. And for that, we have the frozen property of the data class. Here is all the properties that's available. And you can look into the docs to see exactly what everyone do. But just as a quick cap, uh, you, you can turn off the init function and create your own init function if you want. You can create your own wrapper and turn off the wrapper uh, method. You can turn off the equals, but all these are on by default. If you turn on order, uh, they will be orderable or sortable, and it will create less than and greater than functions for you, uh, which is very nice in, in some cases, especially if you want something that's sortable. And this you can uh, also specify with the field function for each field. So if you don't want all fields to be, uh, to be ordered when you do the sorting, uh, then you can just set order false to those specific fields. Unsafe hash. Uh, OK, so uh, I have to speed this up a little bit. But the unsafe hash uh, basically allows you to, uh, to create a hashable data class. So you can, for instance, use it as a key in a, in a, in a dict or uh, for anything else. Uh, it's called unsafe hash because you should probably know what you're doing if you're using the hash. But uh, yeah, if you look into the documentation, you can see that the generated code basically takes all the properties which has the hash set to true, which is default, and uh, throws them through the hash function in Python. And you have the frozen. So if we set frozen to true, we create a immutable data class. Now, this maybe won't work as expected because we are actually mutating the date after we initialize it. So if we try this out, we will get a frozen instance error, which is a custom exception from the data classes module. Uh, but it also proves that it's actually immutable. So we can go around this by creating a static method, a factory method, which creates an instance and does basically the same thing. I created this one very generic, so I don't have to, to 
hard code changes in it when I change the class up. So it basically just looks for the date and formats it and then creates a class instance. And it works as expected. And if I try to mutate it, it will actually throw a frozen instance error. So that are, that's some, uh, some key features of data classes. There are a ton of others, but I won't have enough time to go through them all today. But if you think they seem nice, you should look up the documentation. So in conclusion, it's a great code generator, uh, removing most of the boilerplate we have in Python, I think, when creating classes. It's usable in uh, 3.6 onward, so it's usable in a lot of code bases. It's native in uh, 3.7, and it will be uh, further developed in later versions. It's very versatile, and people will likely be building a lot of libraries around this, so it's uh, very interesting to get in on it now. So get out and uh, use data classes in your everyday work. Uh, I've been doing it for a year now, and it's been great. Uh, and here are some links. Uh, you can take a photo if you want to save them. Uh, you can check my Twitter. I will send out some links there as well. And uh, you can find all the links via either GitHub or the slides. So any questions? Uh, do I have time for any questions? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, any questions? Hi, thanks, Alexander. Do you think the JSON encoder will be standardized as native Python in the future? Mm, I'm not sure, because we have stuff like DateTime, which still isn't standardized but it's very easy to create your own JSON encoder. So I don't see it as a large problem. If you're working with a semi-large uh, code base, you will probably have some custom encoder anyway. And uh, pretty much all the frameworks have their own JSON encoder as well. Uh, any more questions? Yeah, and of course, if there's anything you're wondering, you can grab me uh, in the breaks or when mingling and ask me. Of course, I probably can't answer everything, but maybe I can send you the right links if nothing else. So thank you. It's been great to be here today. <laughs>